Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live. No doubt a shocking title to this video here as we look to the fact that electronic warfare may have been the cause and perhaps NATO's involvement of bringing down Russia's uh, airliner that had the famed uh, uh, the military choir on board, Alexandrov's choir, the concert uh, choir that was on board there, headed to Syria to do a special event there in Syria. Area for the troops there on the ground and now tragedy has struck uh, the Russian people. Of course this was on uh, what is uh, the Christian uh, holiday of, uh, of uh, Christmas on December 25th. We know the Russians go by the, uh, not the Gregorian calendar but the, uh, the Julian calendar so theirs I think is on January the 6th or 7th something like that. But this actually happened. It was a tragedy for the Russian people. Our, our condolences still going out. So many people grieving over lost loved ones as a result of this uh, horrible, uh, some call it an accident, but what we're seeing right now, it's not an accident. And I have been trying to uncover that ever since. I found in Russian news the other day a very interesting article that had suggested that the plane was brought down intentionally. There was a statement of burst transmission that had come out uh, by intelligence sources from Ukraine, believed to be a CIA transmission, which is a common, it's a code terminology in the CIA as well as the military to, to basically to erase any of the information as quickly as possible that's being conducted between maybe one group or the other. And it happened at the time that the, that the, uh, that the uh, uh, Tu-154 Russian plane went down. And remember, this is, or keep in mind, it is a plane with three engines on on board. I have a good friend, Gary Skogibo. Gary's been on Israeli News Live before with us. He has awarded a Congressional Medal because he, in, in his uh, career of flying of over 25 years, he actually lost an engine off of one of his uh, airline jets that he was flying in America, passenger jet, and landed it safely, even with the engine tearing off of the plane. So yes, it's very possible to land a plane if one of the engines go out, because some people have suggested maybe uh, a bird flew into the engine and caused the engine to explode, but that's not, that's not the case here. And we're going to get into that. I actually yesterday listened to a talk show uh, in Russia, is in the Russian language there, but I was listening to the talk show there and they had on a, um, a uh, what they call a reserve colonel and he was saying, it's not possible. This cannot be, uh, as people are saying, a pilot error. It cannot be, he says, because the pilot had the time to, to let the tower know that he was having trouble, but there was no response to that. He said the, the engines all of a sudden went silent. How did he know that the engines went silent? Well, at the time, I didn't know, but I found out later that the engines went silent because there was, as we have here on the screen for you here, in this particular Russian video here that I was watching, there were a witnesses that, that heard the plane as the plane had taken off because they were close to the airport there. Uh, and as they were hearing it, they said suddenly all the engines just went totally silent. And then they could literally hear the plane as it crashed into the sea. Now, the surveillance video, this is a surveillance video. Now, I don't know if this is doctored or not. I've looked at it over and over. Maybe, maybe not. But it's claiming on the surveillance video, that little flasher of light on there was supposedly a flash around the plane. I don't know if that's so or not. But the testimony of the people is reported in the, in the, in the uh, news by Pravda. Now, before I go to Pravda, let me look at RT here with you. This was the last words being said by the pilot that was found on the flight recorder box saying the flaps, damn it, pardon my expression, I don't like using words like that. And then also, Commander, we're going down. These were what were picked up on the flight recorder box. Now they had time for this, and there's even uh, was said by some of the some of those that they picked up the, the you know some of the victims of the crash. They actually had time to even put on life jackets. Some of them actually had life jackets on, and so I'm going to share with you from the Russian language Pravda. And before I go there, though, I want to also mention another very serious issue on here, and that is that. Uh, 
it wasn't just the ensemble that was on. There wasn't just the choir that was there. Uh, there was a special doctor on board, but that wasn't the big issue either. I noticed when I listened to the uh, talk show radio host the other day interviewing the colonel, the reserve colonel, that, she, that they had mentioned there was a general on board. Now, I haven't seen that very much in mainstream media, but on uh, I did find it in Al Jazeera because I couldn't find the original radio program where I would have took you back to that. But there were a, a Russian army general and five colonels were on board. All right, so let's get down to what happened. It looks like it has been an attack, an electromagnetic attack on this plane that was conducted. Pravda.ru, that is the very title, that is the headline right here on your uh, screen here. It's in the Russian language, but I'm going to share with you. I went ahead and put it out because I did... Uh, I'm not, we're not going to do every single paragraph, but we are going to look at several issues in here. Um, the on Pravda, deprived connection, TU-154 radio electronic attack. That's being reported by uh, Pravda.ru, and it is very serious. They're doing this from different um, experts that they brought together to bring this out. And you're going to find out some things here that are very shocking. Let's go right into this. In the first paragraph of this article here that we're seeing here on the on the uh, on, on what's being stated here, let's look at what's going on. Remember, there is a lot of military ships all over the place, including the Black Sea, and not far from where the plane went down, there were both French and American ships in this region, uh, according to some of the reports that I've read. Anyway. Incidents, human factor or the Holocaust. Ministry of Transportation does not consider the version of the attack the main, but others do not line up. Whether it is was excellent pilots, uh, experienced aircraft, technically defective, the case is very similar to the to an airplane explosion in uh, Klagli Mavia over the Sinai. Then the FSB officially announced the attack only two weeks after the crash, and there is another version of electronic attack. All right? Guys, you remember what, what Russia did uh, back in November, not this November, but a year ago in 2015, Russia using a Sukhoi bomber with no bombs, no weapons on board whatsoever, flew past a Donald Cook using electromagnetic uh, pulse that they have as well, uh, I don't know if it's considered electro, it's radio electronic attack, and they actually disabled that entire ship. I think it's 52 sailors put in their resignation when they got back to port, scared them so bad that that one bomber with some kind of new technology on board could totally shut down everything on the ship. Communication, shut down the engines, everything. Left it sitting dead as they called it the Donald Duck after that. Now, that happened. Now it looks like that the U.S. also has, or somebody has some technology similar to this. And I can only say allegedly, I'm not saying the U.S. has done this, or, or France, or anybody else, but I want to read to you what's in this story here. If you drop down to paragraph 3 and 4, it says the TU-15B, uh, uh, MO, uh, this is the flight, the flight number was RA-85572, board took off from the military airfield. Uh, Klanovsky, December the 24th, 5th, excuse me, they board flew to Damascus with refueling in Maz, uh, Mazdok on regular routes. That's what they normally do across the Caspian Sea, Iran, Iraq, and the whole of Syria. But Mazdok was closed and the plane made a detour uh, 408 kilometers. And the article notes, notes this also, of course, of the opposite direction, although Minvad airports were open nearby. So they don't really know why they even went that route. And Adler, Adler allegedly one of the passengers of the plane, were not allowed about two hours. Also, supposedly no one planted on board, nothing loaded, but only refueled the plane, and he flew five hours and 25 minutes. Then, the, uh, then of course, the flight RA-85572, uh, 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 boarded, stopped, responding to request manager, and at, in 527, that is two minutes after takeoff, disappeared from the radar screens. They're just trying to give you the breakdown of what he was doing there, right? Now, on the map, during one of the Ministry of Defense's briefings was shown that the aircraft disappeared from the radar immediately after a turn of 180 degrees. But that's not what happened. That's what we're being told happened. But resource 
Flay radar, which real-time tracking of aircraft status, you know, says that there was no such track. The transponder was turned off. What for? Maybe it was someone cut down after the crash wreckage scattered over an area of 10 to 12 square kilometers. Flow? Explosion? The Ministry of Transport said that the version of the Terrorist Act is not among the uh, priorities. But the F FSB has denied this version. All right. If you drop down to the eighth paragraph, it says each passenger has a phone. This is what one of the experts was wondering about. Even if it would be 15 to 20 seconds, this would be enough. But judging by the fact that no one was able in some way to report on their condition, the situation on board, on the state of the art, it's, it says that the instantaneous nature of destruction of the aircraft says one of, the, one of the experts. Again, they're leaning toward the idea of the electronic attack because it would have affected the cell phones, it would have affected the, uh, the navigation system, uh, it would have affected the, the flaps. Remember, that's another thing they picked up on the transponder there. They found out that the flaps would not uh, go down, but that does seem kind of normal anyway. They should have been locked up. Uh, because why? They're, those flaps are up for lift. It gives the airplane the lift to get, you know, when you're doing your thrust. But then suddenly, even as the eyewitness pointed out, they said all of a sudden you hear the jets, all the engines going, but then all of a sudden nothing. And then they hear, the, they hear a splash, a huge splash in the ocean there. And that was when the plane began to hit, hit the water, but it was all broken up as well. If this is a terrorist attack, it is built on par with the murder of Ambassador Andre Karlov in Ankara. And I bolded this on your screen. I hope you guys can see this. I want you to see what they say here. In one number, with the promise of uh, fa failing or falling Kirby, they're talking about John Kirby here. This is a literal translation, so it doesn't come out so good all the time. That we would soon see Russian planes and coffins if Russia does not stop in Syria. So they're wondering if NATO's involved in this. Note that the transponders are disabled and all communication systems can be explained as follows. On the eve of the tragedy of the Black Sea went, went French reconnaissance ship uh, Dupuis de Lamy, a radio pulse that could cut down all electronics of the aircraft. That's what the French ship is supposed to be capable of doing. This practice is widely used by Israel uh, is against Russian aircraft in Syria. It is reported that there were life jackets on the body of the victims of the disaster. So the crew had time to warn them, but not the controller. It fits into the electronic version of the attack, but there is, this is not terrorism. It is a war with NATO. And that's what Pravda is calling it. So what they're talking about here is, you remember John Kirby a little while back said that, you know, if America, or excuse me, if Russia doesn't stop doing what they're doing in Syria, there are more, more Russians are going to go home in body bags. That's exactly what John Kirby said at the State Department. I'm just paraphrasing it. And then we have this situation here. No one can call. They have time to put on a life jacket. And, you, you know, remember how people from time to time, especially when you're not that high in the air, your cell phone still should be able to work. Nobody can do use that. The pilot, navigator, no one can call back to the tower to say we have an emergency. Everything goes blank. All the engines stop. Everything. There is another question. Why is it necessary to direct the ensemble in the country of war, where, where a number of tens of thousands of armed thugs, teeth with mentors from NATO, has not given up? Complacency that all won. It comes through in the words of the president that we are stronger than any aggressor. In the statement of the chairman of the Federation Council Committee of Defense and Security, Viktor Ozarov, Federation Council, excuse me, who had a few hours after the tragedy said a terrorist attack, it cannot be. Something's going on, friends. In the French article that I pulled up, uh, and again, this is the French article right here. Uh, la, uh, that's uh, La Casa de, de uh, Pupel. Pupel. Uh, I've not spoke French since I was a kid, so I'm not very good at that anymore. Um, and again, I think they're getting theirs from Pravda as well. I'm not sure, but I think that's where they got their article from. But I did uh, translate a little bit of theirs. 
The crash of the Russian aircraft Tu-154 was caused by a radioelectronic attack. We saw in an article it is the CIA that caused the catastrophic fall of the Russian plane in the Black Sea. That this fall is due to a radioelectronic attack commissioned by the CIA, according to the Russian expert Alexander uh, Artemonov. The executants could be French ships that were present in the Black Sea. A Russian defense aircraft heading to uh, Kamimin, a Russian air base in Syria, fell after takeoff in the Russian territorial waters. And of course, and that's what he's saying. Now, he actually quotes it from Alexander Artemonov, uh, who is a Russian expert that believes that it has been done by an electronic attack. I'm Stephen Benoon. This is very serious news. And if it proves out to be that way, I don't know if Russia will even bring it out if that's what happened. It will probably just be one retaliation after another till we end up in war. And what's really odd to me, friends, is that Obama, you know, there, there's been reports as well that there was a big blow up. There was a secret meeting between uh, President-elect uh, Donald Trump's son-in-law in Hawaii with uh, uh, President, Donald Tr uh, President Obama, and they got into a war of words there. Uh, of course, you know, he's the Jewish guy there, and maybe because of what went on in Israel. So we're seeing all kinds of weird things there at the United Nations. Again, I'm not for taking people's land. I think Israel, we should buy land that's that's available, even in the West Bank. Um, but I know things are being done the other way around, and it's only making matters worse. I, I realize that. But then we also have two China uh, their first aircraft carrier sails into the South China Sea with about five other warships along with it there. Part of their, uh, their training mission, as they call it there, but it's building tensions everywhere all over the world. And if this flight, this Russian flight with this, these generals, five of these uh, colonels on board, the entire military ensemble, if this has been taken down by electromagnetic magnetic attack, or excuse me, a radio electronic attack that would have shut everything down, it could, it could plunge everything into war in a very, very near future, friends. It's not a good scenario. I'm Stephen Bernard, and you're watching Israeli News Live. Erev